Welcome, you guys, to another episode of the Best Damn Coach Podcast. I woke up this morning excited about this, about this recording specifically because it's not often. We've only done this two other times on the show where we bring in a round table, so a group of coaches, to come on board today and talk about framework, basically the importance of frameworks in our coaching and practitioner and mentor space. And I've invited three recent, um, we'll call them graduates of our framework builder lab to come on board and kind of share first off what they do in the world, because it's so cool. Each of them is very diverse. I'm going to let them introduce themselves shortly. Um, But to talk about like where they were before the having a framework, where they are now in the process of cultivating it and what it's created for them. Um, because it is my belief that all of us coaches should have some sort of framework or multiple frameworks that we're using inside of our coaching practice to guide results. And so we'll talk a little bit more about the importance of that. But I just first want to say welcome to everyone. Welcome to the show. Um, We're all kind of muting ourselves as we do this, just because when we get into multiple people on podcasts, sometimes we over talk each other, but I think it would be awesome um, to have each of you come off um, live. We'll start with Holly um, and then go to Bonnet and then Liz. And I would just love for you guys to share who you are. You could share where you're at in the world if you feel called to do that and what kind of work you do with clients. All right. Well, I'll start first. Um, So I am Holly Hart. I'm a psychic medium. So it's a very unique, (laughs) unique business. But um, I have been branching out to um, branch out to heartfelt healers. So that is a new section of my business that is uh, training developing mediums in a safe and one on one guidance kind of atmosphere. So um, prior to that, I was always just doing one on one readings or group readings. And so this was a whole new a whole new spin on my business. So that is currently what I do and who I service right now. I love it. And you were also a teacher. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's a big part. Yeah, that's a big part. I was uh, a teacher for 11 years, special education. So I've always been a coach. (laughs) Yeah. And left that recently within like, this was your first year really of not going back into the classroom officially, right? This is year two. Year two. Yep. Okay, got it. Mm-hmm. That's so awesome. Super cool. Okay, thank you for sharing. We'll go to the next. Hi, I'm Bonna Normando. I am the host of the Happier You podcast, and I help people figure out how to live their best damn life. I'll just say it like that because because <laughs> I love your tagline, Amanda. Um, I just happened across this journey myself and I discovered Amanda in one of the groups I'm in and was immediately connected to her. So anything that Amanda's doing, I just, every time I'm around you, you inspire me, you help me find clarity. And because I met you, I now consider myself a coach, which is a whole new journey for me. So I'm excited to be here. Oh my gosh. I have chills, like massive goosebumps in hearing you say that. So I'm just honored that you would share that. And I'm grateful our paths have collided. And what's funny is um, we'll talk more about this, but I think, and maybe you would agree, but just the byproduct of being an FBL is not necessarily anything to do with framework, but it's actually getting clarity on how to articulate what it is that we do outwardly. And just hearing you say that already, I'm like, whoop, there's progress since our last discussion. Do you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Hi there. My name is Liz. I'm from the UK and I help prospective adopters that are at the very beginning of their adoption journey. Amazing. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I came across Amanda through another group so I was in another group and she was a guest speaker in there I really liked what you were saying and how you were delivering the information and then followed you in your free group and then have joined uh, the FBL once it became available so yeah and you're now in the BDC as well You're on mute, Amanda. Yeah, thank you. I'm on mute now. Thank you. But I invited these uh, ladies on the show today because I think we could talk a lot about clarification in the coaching industry. But one of the things or the words I think that gets interchanged often is your framework 
versus your program versus your offers versus your coaching package. And I think there's a lot of muddiness around that idea. And one of the things that I believe, you guys have heard me talk about this on the show. In fact, uh, the episode prior to this, we talked about some of the mistakes that coaches make when building their framework is a framework is a way to position yourself as different in your niche. So there's lots of people already doing what each of us are doing. There's really no new information out there. I think, would you guys all agree? It's just about like recycling old information. But if we're going to be doing that, then we have to do it in a way that sets us apart from everyone else. And I believe that finding a framework is or creating rather a framework is what often helps us do that as coaches and then we start weaving it into our brand and infusing it it brings confidence it brings clarity and the rest is kind of a trickle down and so i would love to just rewind the clock a little bit and you guys could just put a hand up and we'll go just kind of first come first serve but can you share with um the audience like what what made you say yes to deciding like okay i want to embark on this process and create my own signature framework. Go for it, Holly. Um, So I originally thought I had some clarity, (laughs) to be honest. And then um, I'm like, well, I'll, you know, this is a new branch of my business. I need to, uh, you know, explore different options, you know, look for somebody that can help me with getting that branch because the other part of my business has been successful. I'm okay with it. But energetically, I can't do much more than I thought I could. Um, So I'm like, I need to have another branch. And I love teaching. Teaching is my passion. So then when I came across, I went to your free one as well. (laughs) And then I was like, oh, and I've always been connected to you being teachers. I think we just always stick together. And when I worked with you, I was like, oh, I really don't. I was not clear. I really thought I was clear. And I was ex- I was kind of excited, but this whole thing had made me even more excited and more organized. I love that. It's like we don't know what we don't know, right? And being in that container where somebody helps give perspective that's a little bit different brings that next level of clarity. So thank you. Who else? Anybody else like to share kind of where you are? Yeah, we'll go Bana and then Liz. Yeah, so for me, I think clarity is my big word. I had created a course. And I love talking about what, what I do, but it's the, what you did for me was get me to realize the, the clarity in explaining how I get someone there. So we're starting here and we're going there. So the clarity for me is understanding the power of the step-by-step system, but also the way you packaged it got me there. So I joined again because I feel drawn to you. And every time I hear you speak, I get clarity. And FBL didn't disappoint. There was there was so much clarity there and lots of questions, self-discovery. But ultimately for me, it was, yeah, the the clarity and the journey of figuring out, making my message clearer so that I'm a more confident coach. Yeah, I love that. And I'm going to circle back because you were one of few that started on board thinking they were going to go one direction and really like er, took a little bit of a pivot. Would you agree in a different direction? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll come back to that. Cause I think that's part of the process that sometimes we're like, am I doing it wrong? And the reality is no, you're doing it exactly right because we don't want to build a business or coach people that we're really not feeling called to coach just because it's been working or maybe because we feel like that's what we're great at, but we don't love it. So I think that's a great thing to explore as well. Uh, Liz, go ahead. Um, So for me, it was slightly different in that I had been to a number of coaches, taken a lot of training previously, spent thousands of pounds on coaches and trainers to help me. And I knew I was missing. It's almost like every every time I'd done something, I started at 10 and I was missing one to 10. And I was like, why am I not understanding it? Why do I not get it? And then I took your free training and then um you mentioned the fbl and i was like okay let's just try this let's just try another thing and it literally was pinging light bulbs like fireworks in my brain because i suddenly felt after the six weeks i had one through ten so for me that was just like oh my gosh if i had just had this three years ago well and i think it's always true um the 
you know, the cliche, right, is that the, the teacher presents when the student is ready, like when they can really hear what's happening and you've you've muddled through, you know, areas. And so I always think it's divine timing. So, um, no, you know, just like releasing that what if, because I think I think about that too. Had, had I just had this earlier in my business, but I think like I wouldn't have been ready for it then, right? Like mentally, emotionally, life-wise, potentially at all. Um, so let's fast forward. So the Framework Builder Lab, as you guys call, we call it FBL, is a six-week course. It's a live course um, that you get to walk through with me and all the other amazing coaches. We had 36 in this cohort, and we are creating your framework, right? Your methodology, your sweet sauce, your step-by-step -step process that you're going to take your clients through and help them create consistent results. And I liked one thing that Holly really said, and, and when you're starting out as a coach, you're really thinking about like in the moment, like I have these one-to-one -one clients, but what I love about building a framework is it's scalable. So you could bring in one-to-many clients, you could repeat the process over and over. And I think that's what for many many coaches early on, you're kind of just winging it. You like have stuff in your toolbox and you're like just kind of throwing spaghetti out there with no specific rhythm. And that's where the consistency, it, it makes it easier for you as a practitioner because you're like, all right, these are the steps and every client's going to go through this, you know, somehow. For me, that's what I see the value is. It's, it's lighter. It helps me have clarity. I know where I'm taking my clients, but I'm curious for each of you, um, what was your biggest takeaway? You guys mentioned the word clarity, but I'd love to know tangibly, like what was the, after building your framework, what has been the greatest takeaway or most valuable part of having that framework now? Um, well, not only like the deliverables and the tangible items, so like I went back to like my teaching, you know, like it made sense again. And I was like, wait a second, this is, it makes sense. So um, I would say now I have like a rating scale. Like we now know how to observe the progress in our, co in our coaches and our clients. And I think that's huge. Like we, before I was like, Oh, I have all the, I have all the information. Like I know how to, how to process and how to work with spirit, right. My spirit side. But I didn't know, and I know how to teach, but I didn't know how to make it, you know, what are the deliverables, what are the tangible stuff? And then also, um, really, where did I want them to get to? Like, what was the objective? <laughs> and I had a big picture, but this was really helpful to break it down. And I got excited about it. You're on mute again. I'm on mute again. Um, it's one of the, maybe I'll get it right, you guys. Uh, I'm not used to muting myself because it's usually just me and one other person. But I think that's, this is one of the mistakes I talked about in the episode previous is that um, coaches start to build their framework. And we talked at length about this inside FBL without a specific target, right? Remember I used that analogy, like you're throwing a dart at a dartboard that doesn't have a bullseye. And what happens as a byproduct of that is we walk people through a process, but then we are left asking like, but are they really getting the results that they came to us for, right? And if at the end of the day, the results are not concrete and apparent, there's no measurable outcomes, then they aren't going to go tell like everybody like Liz is amazing because they're going to be left wondering, did I get what I came here to do as well? And so that's why I'm, I'm so like, you know, drive the point home that we have to have those identifiable, uh, uh, you know, ultimate goals that were clear that we can measure. So there are specific results that our client is seeking. Uh, Liz, what were you going to share as well? Yeah, for me, it was the, I knew in my mind exactly what I wanted my clients to have and how that would look and what that would look like. But what I wasn't doing until you had brought into the, the whole scenario of the buckets was I couldn't really give them tangible results without sorting through all of that and what they, I wanted them to walk away with. Um, and that was, that was, you know, one of those pivotal moments that, that I was meeting all of my needs about what this program was going to look like, but actually wouldn't ever have been able to market it correctly because I couldn't tell them what they were going to get from it. And yeah, the buckets and the clarity, that's what it gave me. It was like, okay, I can be really clear about what they're going to get 
from this program from my framework only because you know you break it down to make it make real sense um, and completely tangible because I would have been completely fluffy yeah that's the thing we want to avoid is the fluffiness right because it looks good on paper but and the thing about the the process is um, all this, the work you guys have done now can be repurposed on landing pages and sales pages and social media content. So the clarity just bleeds into every aspect of your marketing capabilities, because I, I really believe that when you're a masterful coach, marketing becomes so much easier because you just know your ideal client so much. And if you're listening to this, and even some of you might be struggling, like, do I still know that person very well? I feel like it's kind of like a marriage, like, you, it takes years to really get to know your spouse. And it's the same with your ideal client. The more conversations you have, the more you get their language, the more you can repurpose their language. And that relationship grows over time for sure. Abana, how about you? What was your biggest takeaway or most valuable part now? Just one. Um, so the that quadrant when you did internal and external pain points and internal and external what's the other variable there um wins desi- say desires. it again sorry desires wins. yeah desires yeah um and then when you had us do that i'm like oh i think i got this and then when i think it was actually elizabeth another liz that you walked th- us through hers and that was, I think, right after you explained the plane ride versus, or sorry, the destination versus the plane ride. Mm-hmm. And I realized that I always look at it. This is like, I always talk about the tangibles I'm going to give, but not the exotic island. Like, so I was focusing on the wrong thing. So doing the internal, external pain points to internal, external desires helped me realize the and that was the clarity that I got about what I do. And I don't have to tell them all the details of how I'm going to get them there uh, in the beginning. I just have to get them to understand where I'm going to take them to that awesome island. That was huge for me. I love hearing that. Isn't that such a hard thing, though? It's it's because, I mean, for me, it, it is, is I want to justify. It's almost like when we have these conversations, I'm trying to justify the value, right? I'm like, but you get this and you get this and these things are all on paper. But I mean, if we go back to buying a car, we're really never looking at all the little, like I think about like a sticker on a car. I never go through that itemized list, right? All I'm thinking about is how's it going to feel when I drive off the lot and this thing? right? Like what's the end result? And I think that's a, a really great opportunity as a marketer because um, we are marketers in coaching. But to your point, I get I get that sticking point because I was there right with you of like, but let me show you, you get Voxer and you get this and you get all these things. Yeah. And I just had another thing like, like the yeah, reverse design method, you know, that was extremely helpful. Or, and then it also helped me right? chunk yeah. up, you know, how you do yeah. the pillars. Yeah. Help me chunk that into how long will my workshop be? Like, so I've been able to use it not only for my classes, but like now for a future workshop. So like the repurposing, I'm going to continue to work on breaking apart, you know, the little pieces so that I can use it for content that I'm still working on um, and still need a little bit of help. But I have it in front of me all the time with sticky notes so that I can, I can be more organized when I'm using the information. Yeah, I love that. I would love to know from each of you, like, how are you starting to work the framework into your business? So Holly mentioned now it's kind of like you're taking parts of the framework, which is what I always do. I take parts of my framework and that's, you know, what I'm building workshops with, or I'm looking at the framework and like, what are the mistakes people make, you know, with this particular topic? It's woven into social media content. How are you guys finding it useful now as, um, you know, our official time has ended. What, where, where is it showing up most for you already? So for me, I am looking at the fall and what the next offering is going to be and basically reverse designing it. Like what is the outcome that I want? And then which of my tools are going into each of the buckets essentially. So Again, I I think it's just the clarity and the skill of building a framework. I I now 
now I can build as many as I want for different yeah. things. And just remembering the clarity, the working backwards. And again, I love that quadrant. So when I'm looking at the next offering, I'm like, what are the pain points, internal, external, and what am I going to do for you? You're muted again. Guys, I, I think I'm muted. It's like, the thing is not intuitive to me. Like when it says mute, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm like having a hard time with that. Um, I, I want to say about the quadrant, for me, that's like probably one of like, it's worth hundreds of hundreds of dollars, that quadrant, to be quite frank, because I use it in everything I do in my business. When I'm hosting a workshop, I do a quadrant about that specific topic. Um, when I'm building content for something specific, I'm looking at that quadrant specifically to that problem as well. And then you have kind of this big quadrant that I identify. So if you're listening to this, like, what kind of quadrant are they talking about? Then you have to come into the FBL or into the BDC, because that's where I teach that really juicy piece. Um, but the thing about the, the understanding of the client's desires or, or pieces of that is that can be used for Facebook ad copy. Like that's how I write my Facebook ads. I do a quadrant and that's literally how I walk through ad copy. Um, so there's so many elements of it that go beyond framework building that are powerful. So I love that that keeps coming up. Yeah, go for it. I was just going to say that if you've ever struggled to build a sales page, that quadrant is the answer to every struggle around that. Like that was, like I said, that was huge for me. Yeah. And I'm not a sales page expert, but obviously you learn a thing or two about writing sales pages over the years. But one of the mistakes people make on their sales pages is they don't dip into the pain. And so really that's how a sales page a great sales, a written sales page will start in the pain. And then we move from the in, external internal pain to the paradise of possibilities, which are the desires. And so um, that is such a great point that you bring that up too. Uh, Liz, you were going to share? Um, yes, for me, it has helped because I'm right at the beginning of this journey. So although I've been doing adoption for 18 years um doing it by myself is new so i've used all of the the framework and as content pillars so mine is about visibility and getting my name out there getting my brand out there so i've used all of that to create content which i now know goes to the pain points but also resonates with the with my ideal client because they're the words they're using and that's the information they're asking for so I do a 60 second or 90 second video every Friday just with a snippet of that information in it. So just to keep them so they've got something, but also excited that hopefully they'll come on board once I release the program. Oh, my gosh, that's so awesome. I love hearing just like the, the multiple ways it's happening. Um, I would love to ask. Obviously, you know, um, you guys have shared uh, bits and pieces of what really has spoke to you over that course of the six week um, framework builder lab. But I'd love for you to uh, like just share for somebody that's listening is like, oh, I have a framework, but I don't know if I really need this. Or maybe they're listening and they're kind of curious about what a framework is well, and if it's for them. Th this is the Would thing is that we think we have it until we, like until we actually go into would, the framework um, builder lab yes because heck yeah, I really thought I had it. Like, honestly, and, and I remember talking to you that first mm -hmm. day and I'm like, I feel very overwhelmed. And I remember saying, like, I don't know what's happening because I, it made me get out of my comfort zone, right? Where I felt like I know what I'm doing. And I did like all the homework. I really dove deep into it. And it made me realize like, I really didn't know that I had, I thought I had some type of big, you know, umbrella of a framework, but really and truly to like deep dive, not only did it get me excited again, I have ever since then, I have now like, I work on this all the time and I'm super excited about it. Like I haven't stopped. Um, so. I think that's the thing is we think we might have it, but we not necessarily have it like down to the details, which I think is the, the biggest part is like we we have the big picture, but then to do a deep dive and to really get the outcome for our clients to be the best damn coach is really the most important because that's what we really want for our clients. I want my clients to be able to communicate with spirit loved ones for their own purposes or for, you know, if they ever want to become a medium that I couldn't get them there without like more specifics. Um, and so I think it's also just getting excited. 
and getting geared up for what you have to offer has helped a lot. Yes. It's like the unblock opens up the floodgates sometimes, right? When you, you know, I always refer to it as insider blindness. When we've all been working so much in our container, we've been doing the thing in our business. But sometimes I think even in the FBL, some of the most powerful, I mean, maybe you guys can agree is just when we do, when we make space for open coaching or we break out into small groups and we are just able to ping pong with other people that don't really know our niche very well. Um, but because we're so inside of it and we're in, you know, we're in the copy and in with those clients that we can't really see that there's so much like simplicity on the outside. And that, that was a really valuable part watching all of you for sure. Uh, Liz, you had your hand up next. Um, yes. I mean, I could echo everything that Holly has said because I agree with that hundred um, percent. And for me, it was because I have done so many courses before um, I did think I had everything that I needed. I just needed the framework to make it all work. But what I didn't, think that I was going to get that I got was just so much more pinpointing the detail it's you know it's like a paint by numbers and then when you go around the outside of a pen and then everything just lights up and everything is just at the forefront and real so for me it was just having that um, ability to really fine tune everything about my program and make it look incredible i i said to you amanda that i wrote my whole program out and i was so excited about it i wanted to take my own program because it sounded so good that's pretty <laughs> freaking awesome, awesome when that happened so and that's what it was it was the excitement it was the container it was the clarity it was bringing it all together and um also, it wasn't just about learning from my own perspective. It was other people asking questions I didn't know that I needed the answers to. And without those answers, I wouldn't have had even more clarity. So it was being in that container, listening to everybody, you live coaching people through systems. And then it was like, bang, bang, bang. And it was like, gosh, I didn't even need, know I needed to know that. But now I do. It, it was the gift that kept giving. So... If anybody's sitting on the fence, please don't dive right in. Mm, thank you. That's so awesome. Anything, Lana, you feel like? Oh, for sure. Uh, like like Liz said, I, I think we were all in the same group. Uh, we all really enjoyed it. I've already told a bunch of my friends the next time you open it up, they have to do it. I don't think it matters where you're at. I just think there's so much to learn from as, you know, especially when you're a solopreneur, when you just, like you say, you're inside the container and just to learn and talk to other entrepreneurs who are doing their own thing, uh, just to talk to each other, learn from each other. But honestly, you know, above all that is the, the time with you, you know, like I forced myself to jump in and ask questions and put myself out there, which isn't my uh, comfort zone because you're so powerful in the moment you just, you run with it, you inspire us. And so many clarity, so much clarity came from just questions you'd ask or a comment that you'd say, or you'd, so yeah, just you on the spot is super powerful as well as all the things the girl said. <laughs> I just wanted to add another thing like too, like to meeting other people really from all over. It was pretty cool. I was actually asked from one of our track. people in our <laughs> framework to lab to, to be like at their retreat pieces. in Canada virtually um so the people you meet you know and the you never know the connections that you'll make and so I think that was really cool and I'm like oh cool I could I'm in Canada now <laughs> I will be <laughs> virtually You're officially an international speaker almost. Yeah. Um, amazing. I would love to shift the focus on you guys. 
Um, and I would love for you to share just what you're excited about in your business. So you've all mentioned that you've been building frameworks either for existing coaching experiences or ones that you're about to release. Um, but I'd love for you to share the with the audience, like what's exciting in your business, what's about to be available. Just tell us a little bit about your coaching offers. And then of course, send us to where we can find you, whether that's a website or a social media handle and everything you guys hear, of course, um, I'm going to drop in the show notes. You can connect with everyone and uh, throughout social media. When this episode is live, I'll be tagging them so you can make connections. Um, but whoever wants to start, tell us like what what's inspiring you in your business right now. Go ahead, Vanna. Well, first off, I realized the other thing that I got from FBL was watching you teach live. So I had created a course, but it was all recorded. And I I think both of the other two ladies as well said they did your freebie, which I did as well. And just realizing that, so I have the knowledge and watching you do it live was so powerful and then realizing when you do it live, you can coach on the spot, which is again, so inspiring. So that's what I'm excited about is you inspired me to take my offering and make it more bite-sized pieces, but with the live coaching involved. And so we're gearing up and just figuring out what that is going to be in October. So that's what I'm really excited about. Yeah. I'm so glad that that resonates. There is, I agree with you. Um, there's something about live energy. And as I'm refining my business and just like trying to cultivate a future vision um, and like moving away from one-to-one -one work and exclusively focusing on group offerings, it's like, I love coaching though. And I, I love the idea of passive courses, right? It's definitely, you know, s smart as far as being able to make money while you sleep. And I'm here for that. But there's just these certain elements that I would never want to replace being able to coach people live. And I think it's a beautiful way to like have a bit of both in there, the scalability model, right? Because you can bring so many people into that. Um, so I'm excited to see what you come up with too. And where can our listeners connect with you too and learn more about that? Uh, yeah. So we, my podcast is anywhere you listen to your podcast. It's called The Happier You. And the website is The Happier Yeah. You. So I started teaching actually up. after What's the framework. Um, I Ooh, started teaching classes on Monday shows. nights in Thanks Peoria so to Thanks, just... Any developing mediums, I'm also offering it to children that have like a spiritual tutor. So that's going to be happening once a month on uh, Mondays as well. So I'm excited about that. Um, those are Mondays. Those are drop-ins. It's $20. Pretty simple. Just come in. Then I am going to be doing a deeper dive into the workshops. And those are going to be done virtually, but live one-on-one. -on -one. Um, a lot of my clients are going to be sitters is what they're called. Um, where people will go ahead and read them. My developing mediums will read them. And I've already had a selection of people that are ready to go. So if you're interested, that will be happening in this fall. Haven't decided on a date yet, but that's what I'm super excited about. I can't wait to do it virtually and be all over. Um, and then you can find me on Heartfelt Healings on Instagram and then also on Facebook, Heartfelt Healings as well and meetup groups. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> awesome. And just so her her branding is a play on her last name. So heart, H-A-R-T, just so you guys know that as well. Amazing. How about you, Liz? What are you excited about? Excited about? Um, so I'm, I'm more excited that I feel able to speak about what it is that I'm able to do for prospective adopters. <laughs> so I have so much more confidence. I'm all over stories now, which I wasn't before. And I'm making reels and doing all of that because um, I have something to offer that um, one of the things she said in one of the lessons was about being the best kept secret. And that is who I was. Nobody knew I was there. Um, and now I'm out. I'm out there. I'm telling everybody. And um, yeah, I feel proud about what I'm doing um, because I know that I can help and I know that I can make a much brighter future for adopted children. Um, but being secret meant that that wasn't happening. So, yeah, so I'm super excited that, yeah, I'm just being brave. <laughs> I love it. And um, uh, where can we find you on social media? 
Oh, okay. So I'm on Instagram and it is Adoption Mentor Liz. And my website is One to Cherish. Amazing. Okay. And um, there we go. Um, any other final things that we left off, you guys, that you feel like is relevant? You guys rocked it, by the way. Um, I don't know if you had any thoughts or ideas. I just want to make sure that you have the time. Um, but I think what I just want to tie up and bring back together is that sometimes the biggest block that I believe we have in our businesses is clarity. It's like if I just had somebody to get me unstuck or to really have a way to communicate what it is that I do um, or be able to articulate with more clarity who it is I serve and the results I curate, there is just so much that can begin to be cultivated because of that. And I think these three are such an example of what momentum looks like when you've had some time, you invest and focus on a very specific problem inside your business. We're not doing lavish, like we built a framework. It's a very specific problem <clears throat> that we solved. And I think that's a testament to also us inside of our businesses. We tend, and you guys figured, you guys figured this out early on in the framework is, we tend to want to solve lots of problems all at once. I'm and also, I think, doing it all it on our own. It sounds like we all are doing this as problems, solo or the, without the a partner. And so it was really nice to have, practitioners have clarity, you know, and as much as I want to lean on my husband, <laughs> he doesn't help give me the it. push, you know, that I needed. And I think, Amanda, you have really helped me um, feeling like I'm not alone. And like also the Facebook community where we could add in you know, here's what I'm thinking. And then you would respond. So that was an additional help that it wasn't just the six week course, which by the way, was perfect timing. I felt like it was great. Um, but we also had that, like, as we're doing our homework, what I called homework, um, we could get your advice or get other people's feedback on that Facebook community group. So I never felt alone in that six weeks, even though I, you know, we like to lean in on our loved ones here at home, but it is nice to have other business professionals help us. For sure. I always like I'll come to my husband and we've gotten very specific in our marriage and he'll say like, OK, do you want me to just listen or do you want me to like coach you right now? Or I don't know about you guys. Sometimes he'll be like, oh, and that'll be two thousand dollars <laughs> because he'll say like you're investing in these coaches and I just solved your problem in five minutes. I'm like, OK, well, I don't want to hear it from you sometimes. <laughs> Um, well, you guys are amazing. I'm so grateful that you took the time to be with us. And please um, go connect with these amazing coaches. Um, learn who they are, what they do. And um, I think that those of you listening who have heard kind of this inspiration about the FBL, I would love to have you. And we'll also include the upcoming link to the doors opening of the FBL, which is happening this October um, for another six week cohort. It'll be our last time we offer it live, potentially. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe these guys just changed my mind that I might always have to do it live. Um, but I take it one, one cohort at a time. So again, you guys, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you.